Hello, my name is Dr. Brian Abelson. We're going to go over our innovative process for resolving low back pain. We're going to take you right from the beginning, going through some of the basics we do in terms of examination, treatment, and what it takes to resolve this condition. So one of the first things we're going to do after taking a complete patient history is to go over the critical vitals. So let's do that now. After we've taken the vitals, then we'll proceed on to an orthopedic examination. After performing the orthopedic tests, then we're going to take the patient through a neurological examination. So after going through the orthopedic and neurological tests, we're going to go through a series of biomechanical tests. Things like squats, single leg, double leg, gait analysis, checking out which muscles are being activated and which are actually being inhibited. So after we've gone through all the orthopedic and neurological tests, we have our vitals, we have a complete history, we're going to get a general idea of where we should start. The examination will show us if we have certain joints that are restricted or with more soft tissue, and then we'll start to implement a, a bit of a strategy. In general terms, we always want to try and treat the person in an active position. People will walk in the door and they'll say, you know, I only hurt when I perform certain motions. It could be lateral flexion, rotation, whatever it is, picking up something it doesn't make a lot of sense to treat them in a static position. So we'll start to incorporate different types of ideas into our treatment. And quite often we'll actually have to be fairly innovative and come up with ideas on how to treat this individual for their specific needs. So let's start out with some basic treatments if we had a joint restriction. So if we've actually found a restriction in joint mobility, we're going to get in and we're going to manipulate that joint. A lot of people don't understand why we actually do manipulation. It's, it's really quite simple. We want to restore normal motion. It's not as if joints go out of position so much as they lose their mobility. Now, when I get in there and I actually manipulate a joint, you'll hear this popping sound in the area. What this is, this cavitation of the joint is release of gas in the area. Now, what that does is it actually fires the neurological receptors so everything surrounding the joint starts to release, what they call the periarticular area. It's, it's a very effective way of getting in quite deep and releasing not just the joint itself, but the surrounding soft tissue structures. Mickey, why don't you lay on the side there, I'll just give a real common example of how I would actually manipulate, let's say, the SI joint. So I'll get in, move this around, I may feel a restriction that I found on assessment, bring it back, drop it down. Good. Feel okay? Mm -hmm. Good. Turn to the other side. Get in here. These are some pretty standard procedures that I'm doing right now. This one's called side posture. Take it down. Good. We only put as much force into the joint as we need to actually get a little bit of mobility in there. And now I'm just going to check farther up the spine here. Why we'd actually go farther up is because if one area tightens up, you're always going to get areas above and below that point that also get restricted. Down. Perfect. Great. Okay, come on up. The next component we need to look at is the soft tissue restrictions. By soft tissue, I'm referring to muscles, ligaments, tendons, and how they affect all the surrounding structures in terms of our nervous system. Are they causing compression? Are they decreasing uh, cardiovascular function? Now, there's a lot of different techniques we could use, and they're all really good, but they all have their strengths and limitations. What we need to do is find something that works really well for each individual. For example, active release technique, a great technique developed by Dr. Mike Leahy, which also comes from pin and stretch many years ago. Uh, Ida Rolf developed some of this, but Mike Leahy took it a lot farther in terms of its development. Other techniques such as Nemo, Groston, these are all great procedures, and they're really good, but when we start combining them together, they get even better. Uh, for example, if I'm doing some standard ART procedures, just cross your arms over there. I'll just take a range of motion here a little bit. 
Are you feeling okay? Yeah. Right. Good. So this is a pretty non-invasive procedure, but what I'm doing here is I'm actually introducing some motion into it. And so I'm pushing the structure in one direction and I'm getting Mickey to move in another direction. So I'm actually helping to separate different layers of tissue, breaking up adhesions, restoring mobility. Is that feeling okay? That's a lot deeper. <laughs> a lot deeper. <laughs> yeah, you can notice that quite soon. Okay. Now, the next procedure we're going to show you is something called Groston, or an instrument-assisted modality. But we're going to combine this with a little balance of proprioception. Good. One of the common instruments we use is called a Graston tool. There's actually six different tools, but in terms of actual instruments out on the market right now, there's probably about 85 to 100 different types of instruments you can use. And each of them, when you go through these procedures, it does a really interesting thing. When you actually work on an area, it stimulates the production of cells called fibroblasts. And why that's so important is because these are the cells that actually stimulate collagen production. If we can do that, increase it 20, 30 percent, the area will become a lot more stable, stronger, less likely to be injured. Now, quite often when we're doing this technique, we'll get a person to do things like stand on a wobble board or some kind of a balance device. So we've got Mickey here on the wobble board. Mickey, why don't you go up there now, find a neutral position. How's that going there? That's good. Okay. And then I'll start working through the different areas here. Now you can start moving from side to side if you like a little bit. And so I'll work all the way through the hips, up into the low back. Now when we're working on an area, quite often we, a person may come in and they say, oh I've got pain in this one area here. And they don't even realize how tight it is above and below the affected area. How's that feeling there? That's good. It's okay? Yeah. Good. And that's pretty easy staying on that? Yeah, it's actually and, not too bad. Yeah, good. So you can probably go back and forth. Just try and put yourself off balance a little bit. There we go. Mm -hmm. A little more challenging? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually an advanced wobble board. So it, it's, it's a little bit harder than uh, what we give a person when they first started. We put, actually put them on something quite simple. But generally, this just feels good when you do it. Excellent. One other way that we commonly treat patients is actually have them perform the exercises that we prescribe while we're giving a treatment. And there's a lot of different ways we can do this and we use a wide variety of different techniques. So what we'll do is we'll always prescribe exercises, starting out with flexibility, mobility, take programs from our books and have them perform certain, certain programs or from videos that we produced. And then we'll go through the exercises and we'll actually treat them while performing the exercises. Let me show you. Mickey, why don't you go into a bird dog position? Okay, and just go ahead and perform it there. So I'm going to take the Graston tool and go ahead up and down, if you like, not too fast. And I'm going to work on her while I'm performing this. And something like this is so great because the bird dog exercise is for motor control. Now, the SI joint here is stabilized by the latissimus dorsi muscle and the glutes. And this allows me to get in there and work the entire kinetic chain while she is performing the exercise. How does that feel right now? That's nice. So you just kind of work all the way up. And why don't you actually hold that up there for one sec here. So we may even introduce another element into this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get Mickey to actually take this band here. Now bring it back down and reach out. So a little bit of resistance while I'm performing the exercise here. Okay, good, good. While well, she's performing the exercise, <laughs> I should say. And out. And at the same time, I will treat them. Does that feel a little bit different? Yeah. Does that kind of take, put you off balance a little bit there? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to actually change the angle a little bit, make it a little bit harder. Are you okay? Yeah. Back down. But the results from doing this are incredible. Quite often we'll have people come in and they won't see much of a change doing some of the standard modalities. As soon as we start doing this, they see great results. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Shall begin.